This is Utah Concerts. This is Utah Concerts. This is UtahConcerts.com. Ah! I'm curious as to why you chose Nashville for the record release party. Uh, two huge reasons. One is that um, the majority of the band and the crew live here. Um, I used to. Uh, the seat. So the, the hub of the band has been Nashville for, as a matter of fact, at one point we all lived here. Two of us have moved out, moved away, but um, uh, so it's it's essentially home, mm -hmm. our U.S. home. A and the second reason is uh, the whole album was recorded here. Um, uh, we did we tracked at Omni, and I can't remember the other one, but um, two large drum rooms to get basic tracks, and then. Um, our guitar player Rich has a studio here, uh, so all the vocals and guitar overdubs and all that sweetening and mixing was done uh, oh. at his studio. First and foremost, I was one of those lineup changes. They had gone through five or six bass players, and then I met them and they were looking for someone who could sing and play. So uh, I passed their audition in the band that I was playing in. The door started to swing, people started to leave, and every person that came in, um, I was part of every one of those changes. Um, and so, transitioning, we made sure that the people that came in could sing, and respected and honored the core of what the band was about, which was good songs and good vocals and you know a strong live performance. Uh, we have never. We have fun. We're we're not saints by any means, but you know we're not sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and and abusing our bodies and and you know that negative side of, of the business. So over the course of all those years, there's been a thread there, all the way through, of someone that stood on stage with all the founding members and was part of that vocal blend and and part of the recording process all the way along. So. The further we got along with it, I was the only one that has been in th through all those things. The songs keep us going. The songs are awesome. Uh, the songwriters wrote great material that is being passed on from generation to generation. And the show, with all those people coming in and out, with our being very conscientious about the show, the show's been strong all the way along. I mean, it, different different sounds and different aspects to it. but. This lineup now, um, Greg's been in the band 14 years. I've been in the band 34. The lineup itself, the Nashville people have been in for now going on eight years. So this is the most stable Little River band in the 38 years. There are old fans that seriously wish the band would have quit in 1981 or 82 when the original lead singer left the band. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're done, you can't, you can't go any further. The sound of the band just left. Well, I was already singing lead vocals and the guy we got in was amazing and we were writing good songs, so you can't get rid of that chapter. And then the original lead singer came back, so that took us into the early 90s and then we were touring with four of those, you know, members mm -hmm. of the lineup that everybody knew, so there's just, there's all these different stopping points where people go, you're, you're no longer valid. And the flip side of that is, people come up to me and say, I didn't even know who Little River Band was until Night Owls and you joined the band. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back, I'm just saying you got fans that go way back that are accepting, you got fans that go way back that go, I, you're not, you're not the band. Right. And my answer to them is, that band was captured on record and DVD and, and on, you know, CDs. Listen to them. God bless you. No problem. But don't stop the band from continuing its career when it continues to make good music and all along the way, new people are being turned onto this band. So if we extend the band into 40 and a 45 year history and those guys were the beginning of it and we're at the end of it, then isn't it all one big picture and everybody shared and participated and, and contributed to the, the longevity of the band. The new CD is called uh, Cuts Like a Diamond and there's a single off of it called The Lost and the Lonely. Um, I will say that 
This is the first time in a long time that we've had a record label. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> we have record label support, huge support from, yeah. it's an Italian label called Frontiers. They created a video clip, they've released a single worldwide, they've released a worldwide distribution of the new CD. We haven't had that kind of support in 25 years. How does it compare? Um, interesting question. I just saw somebody who is one of those people who like, they're from the camp that, you know, if it doesn't have those guys in it, it's not Little River Band. He said, if I close my eyes and I don't pretend that it's Little River Band, it's a really good CD. So I have to give credit to the fact that it's a great sound, the vocals are huge, the guitar harmonies are huge, the songs are good, so on and so forth. So I have to put aside my political feelings and say, this is a really good CD. Um, I'll say something else that I just found out this morning. This is really cool. The album, the CD, came out in Europe on Saturday, the 24th of August. They shipped, I don't know how many, but somewhere you know, in the thousands of copies to Germany. This morning, all of the copies, copies in Germany were sold. Wow. Germany is sold out. So they have to ship more to Germany. Now, Fantastic. I don't remember hearing that kind of report ever in 34 years with the band. So it may have happened, and I'm not saying it didn't, but it's really cool that it just happened just now for this new record. And the reviewers are saying, it sounds like Little River Band, but it sounds like Little River Band now, and you've stepped another step forward. You haven't broken the formula of what the band's about, which is vocals and harmonies and good songs and layers and whatever, but you sound like a modern 2013 version of Little River Band. I can't ask for anything more. They like the music and they're not going, oh, you don't use a, you know, <laughs> sounds horrible, you know. Right. All I can say is it's all good. We've been in the background of a couple other Will Ferrell things, right. posters that he created to say that he was a Little River Band fan, because mm -hmm. quite frankly, we're the band that people don't like to admit they like sometimes, but if you check nine out of 10 of them, the greatest hits CD will be in the car mm -hmm. CD player, you know what I'm saying? Right. So the whole thing was tongue in cheek that this reminiscing was the song that he used to pump himself up. It's, it's absurd, it's farce, so, so we get it and we laugh at it, so throwing the CD out the window, yeah, you know, this probably happened before. But what happens is, so young people, mid-20s, late-20s, go to see this comedy movie, and they go, oh, wow, Little River Band. Parents, I used to like Little River Band. They dig it out. We, we, we heard some, somebody the other day, they went to, the, went to the movie, two couples, they came out of the movie going, let's have a Little River Band party. And they invited their neighborhood, and they put the CD on, they played it all day, and, you know, people party into it and whatever. So... Any press is pretty much good press as long it. as it's not, you know, really ugly or something. And then that's kind of what's happened. People coming up and say, hey, how was that? You were in the movie. And, and did you know? And why didn't they pick the other guy instead of reminiscing, which would have been the title track and whatever? Uh, you know, it's Will Ferrell. I don't know. He <laughs> does what he does. What's the best concert that you've ever been to as a spectator? Oh, as a spectator. Mm -hmm. Toss up. Okay. <laughs> One of them we opened for, but we, I, my heroes, my all, all time heroes are Earth, Wind, and Fire, and we worked together at a fundraiser. So when we were done, we walked out front and, as spectators, got to see my, you know, my favorite man. I've seen I've seen him a couple of times since, but that night was very special. Outdoors, they sounded incredible. Um, great, great experience. The other one, I would have to say was Chicago, but Chicago, when Chicago was just out, it was 1968, uh, 69, it was an outdoor show at Soldier Field in Chicago, a uh, beautiful Chicago day with thousands of people. I was in a band that was playing their music, we had horns, and to go see them and, and, and listen to them was spectacular. And we're rolling. Okay. <laughs> I just thought of another one. Two more heroes, great solo artists though, um, was the uh, Billy Joel and Elton John tours when they toured together. W w my wife is a huge fan of Elton and I'm a huge Billy Joel fan, 
respect them both, but to combine those that that music for that four hours was spectacular, and they were just on fire. It was was a great great night. I mean, it was one of those things where as soon as they started playing, everybody stood up and knew every song for four hours. That's just it was crazy. It was good. Yeah.